Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to our remote writing workshop. So many first time authors have questions about endorsements and acknowledgements. They're both standard parts of a book that you want to include. The words sound a bit familiar and both are meant to recognize something or someone amazing, right? Well, there are distinct differences in content, purpose, and placement. So let's dive into characteristics of each. This has been a very frequently asked question and a very frequently visited blog on our website acknowledgements versus endorsements. So we're just going to get right into it today. <laughs> we should start with the basic definitions. What are acknowledgements and what are endorsements, Erin? Yeah, I think it's because they both end in M-E-N-T-S. I don't know. <laughs> but it is a common question. Um, so get right in. Endorsements, uh, that's when an endorsement is when a person gives their public approval or support to someone or something. So in a book, the endorsements, which are sometimes called blurbs, they're really just providing a seal of approval or a testimonial about your book that is convincing or hoping to convince potential buyers that the book is worthwhile, it's a worthwhile purchase, and hopefully an interesting read. Now, ideally, endorsements are going to help sell your book. And so simply put, these are the read this book, this is why, the quotes that you see on the front and back covers. Now, acknowledgments, this is where you as the author recognize those who have helped you bring your book to fruition. So acknowledgments are a wonderful way to publicly and permanently thank those of importance and really show your appreciation. So although acknowledgments probably won't affect your book sales, they are important. And taking the time to publicly say a thank you to the people who have helped to make your book a reality, is very important. Awesome. So now that we know the difference, let's talk about endorsements. What makes a good one? When do you get them? And where are they featured in the book? Well, it's, it's important that as soon as the manuscript is in its most final form, you want to begin sending it out for endorsements. So usually that's after it's been copy edited or proofread so that it's as polished as possible because you wanna give people with busy schedules as much time as possible to read your book and respond. Uh, you seek out endorsements before the book is published. So these aren't reviews that happen after your book is printed. This is beforehand and you don't wanna send them out a, a week before you need them and say, please read this entire manuscript and get back to me. So a strong endorsement is from an expert in the field in your subject matter or a celebrity. Now a celebrity doesn't have to be Lady Gaga. It can be a so-called celebrity in a certain subject matter. So really anyone well-known by your target readers. It doesn't have to be well-known by everybody. And a strong endorsement can add a lot of value to your bottom line markability. But an endorsement from someone without any expertise or name recognition probably won't. So if your Aunt Sally, for instance, loves your novel, her words of praise probably won't mean much to your average reader. But if a celebrated novelist or at least some sort of novelist sings your praises, that's a different story. Now, Again, if a renowned yoga instructor wants to provide some words of praise for your book, but the book is on gardening techniques, it's not gonna carry as much weight for the reader as if a distinguished horticulturist endorsed the book. Now, of course you want to an endorsement that shows enthusiasm for your book and tells the potential reader what they will get as well if they're gonna buy and invest time in your book. Now, the full list of endorsements, all of the ones you get, you can, you can usually find that in the interior of the book because there's room to include everything in there, usually in the first page or two. And if an author has multiple books, a series, they can include endorsements from all of those in the interior as well. But what you want to do as an author, you want to choose the strongest endorsements to highlight. You can place those on the front cover, the back jacket. And again, that's really if they're really good and strong and that's when they're going to influence the reader so they're going to see the most impressive and influential endorsements first and as we always say readers can and do judge a book by its cover right Castley? right what our mothers told us <laughs> exactly i can't take credit for that line that is a, that is a line from justin branch that i have just used so much <laughs> Justin is one of our, he is our director of consulting and that is his favorite line to use and I have to get it from him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even though acknowledgements won't influence a reader to buy the book, they are important to consider. Can you tell us why in a bit more about what an author should include in this section? Right, um, so acknowledgements aren't required but most authors do include them. 
So a great way to start is just to make a straight list of everyone, anyone who helped you along the way, because you don't want to forget anyone. Uh, most authors are going to include people, publishers, assistants, uh, their inspirations, their mentors, teachers, editors, family members. Um, once you have your basic list, then really get in there and craft something good because although acknowledgements aren't specifically for the reader, you want to write knowing that your audience is going to read them and you want them to enjoy those words. So put some thought into crafting your acknowledgements just as you would any other part of the book and really choose those words carefully. Now, acknowledgements can consist of general thank, you, thank yous. You can say something like, to all the female authors that paved the way before me. Um, you could also just get straight to it and provide a detailed list of each person at your publishing house. Or you can write a heartfelt paragraph of gratitude to your mother for all she did for you. Or you can give a nod to the baker down the block who always had a warm muffin ready for you when you came in to write. You can combine the two. You can do a long paragraph to your mom. You can do a short list of names at your publisher. So you have to kind of feel it out what works for you. The important thing is to be detailed and sincere. So for example, um, instead of saying to my husband, Bill, thank you. You can try something such as, I'm forever grateful to my husband, Bill, who read every draft of every chapter and stayed up late and was my editor and still was a lawyer by day and rubbed my feet at night. You know, all of these things should be very heartfelt and sincere because remember that the people you mention in your acknowledgements, they're gonna cherish cherish this recognition for a really long time. And it's important to them. It's, it's really special to be in the acknowledgements of our book. And don't get me started on the dedication, but <laughs> you know, it makes people feel good. So you wanna make it count and you wanna make it enjoyable for the reader as well, so yeah. Definitely, and to all the partners of authors and writers, be like Bill. Yes, exactly, <laughs> very supportive. <laughs> be like Bill, that is my. <laughs> final state of advice. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Erin, for that great information for writers who often don't know exactly what these terms mean. In the past videos, we've also clarified and differentiated some other often confused parts of a book, such as the preface, introduction, and the foreword. So check out those videos as well and make sure you're up to date on your book components. So Erin, what is our assignment for this week? Well, as I mentioned, it's never too early for this. So start, begin thinking about who you could approach for endorsements when the time comes. Um, you can start researching now how to get in touch with certain people, you know, figure out who their agents are or how, you know, start going down that road on how you can find out this contact information. If they're well known, especially, it might take some digging to find the representative. And also right now you can begin drafting a letter requesting endorsements. Um, even if you haven't finished with your manuscript, so you don't have some certain details for the body of the letter, um, you can keep it kind of basic and do your, for instance, opening and closing lines and you know just get kind of a, a skeleton outline down there, figure out what you're gonna do. I will throw in that LinkedIn is a great way to uh, pitch endorsements. This is uh, what we and I, both the marketing team sometimes uses uh, to pitch author endorsements. Um, I've heard from a mul from multiple of our authors that they will respond to every LinkedIn message they get regarding praise for the book. If the LinkedIn message is well crafted and just isn't flat out like, will you endorse my book? It's <laughs> <laughs> if it's a well-crafted message that appeals to them and, you know, invites them to do something, you know, make sure you're going over this message with either like a marketing rep or have someone else look at, take, take a look at it before you send it. But, you know, a lot of times people do, they do respond well to nicely crafted messages on LinkedIn. I can speak to this personally because I do a lot of our author outreach on LinkedIn and people, you know, they love hearing more about, you know, the business and, and what you're trying to do. You just have to make sure that initial message is crafted well and, you know, right. is catered to them. Right. And you can, you want it to be professional. You can still be unique and engaging and show your voice, but still be very professional. So not just what's up, hey, you know, <laughs> you can't approach people like that, exactly. even though you might have think that, you know, that's a way to appeal to someone. You always want to be professional. And again, you can still be very distinctive and show your engaging voice while being professional and approaching these people. Exactly. And a little praise goes a long way, especially if you find, you know, a nugget of information that you couldn't just look at their profile and find, like, let's say they wrote a recent blog post. If you 
like a, to pertain to something that they recently did to show that you actually pay attention to their work. They love to see that. They don't want to hear just, uh, you know, an average message saying, you know, you're really well known, want to endorse my book, you know, really find something specific to them, give them a little praise. And trust me, a little praise goes a long way. That's great advice. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Thank you again for tuning in to our remote writing workshop. We hope everybody has a lovely Friday. And a few of you have been commenting on our videos saying these are so helpful. So we love to hear that. Keep doing that. And also keep sending us your recommendations for videos. We love to hear what you guys have to say and also how we can help you guys in any way with topics that we can cover here. So uh, we will see you guys next time.